Friends, I'm always getting people asking me to do more videos on pharmacology. So today I'm doing that. Today we're doing cesium implants. Do you know what a cesium implant is? Do you know what doctor's orders to expect with a cesium implant? Do you know what to do if the cesium implant falls out? Well, you're going to find that out coming right up. Hello, Clinic Review family, Dr. Sharon with Clinic Reviews, and today we're going to be doing cesium implants. Cesium implants are something that you could definitely get tested on. It's uh, It actually falls under pharmacology, but it's also a safety issue. So we are a part of the bigger Clinic Review family, which is was founded by Mark Klimek. He is the man. He, he founded it about 40 plus years ago. And you can get his NCLEX review on demand if you want. We are continuing to go through the blue book. I honestly can't remember what page this was on. <laughs> it's a cesium implants. It's under pharmacology if you have the book. You can get the book at Amazon. And if you live outside of North America, you can get the app at clinicreviews.com. Let's go ahead and jump right in. Now, I cover the blue book by writing questions. The blue book is a fact-based book. It's just facts. When people say, what content do I have to know? Well, a lot of the content is in the blue book. It's just facts that you can study uh, by going through the blue book. What I do is I write questions to teach you the content. But if you're taking the NCLEX soon, y'all, I wouldn't wait for me to get through all the videos for the blue book because there's literally hundreds of topics in there. It's going to take me a long time to get through the blue book. So I recommend purchasing it, going through there and making sure you know all the topics before you take your NCLEX. However, I am going to talk about cesium implants today. So let's go ahead and get started. The nurse is observing a student nurse caring for a client with a cesium implant. With which of the following actions by the student nurse should the nurse intervene immediately? And y'all, I wrote this question. I don't know if that's correct English. With which of the following actions? All right. Which action are you seeing that you have to intervene immediately with the student nurse? Okay. So let's see which one we think is okay when caring for a patient with a cesium implant. By the way, cesium implants are often, uh, usually, not always, but usually like a rice-sized implant that they put into the cervix to as it emits radiation and um, it's used to, to kind of that initial treatment of cervical cancer. So that's what a cesium implant is. It can also be used actually to treat prostate cancer. Today, we're going to be talking about primarily using uh, cesium implants with a female for cervical cancer. Um, just letting you know, it can be used with a male for prostate cancer. Okay. So we've got something that's emitting radiation. So which of the following are we most concerned about or would we intervene immediately? Raising the head of the bed to 30 degrees, standing next to the bed to provide perineal care, assisting the client to turn to her right side to listen to her lungs, instructing the client she must remain on bed rest. Okay, so think about this. The cesium implants are small rice-shaped sized implants that go into the cervix. The patient cannot sit up too high, but they can't sit up higher than 45 degrees. So 30 degrees is fine with a cesium implant. 45 degrees is the height that is can't go higher than 45 degrees. Um, can the student nurse stand next to the bed to provide perineal care? Y'all know the, the student nurse needs to stand at the head of the bed primarily <clears throat> when providing care. And actually the student nurse does not provide, nobody provides perineal care for this client. That's too high of a risk of radiation. Okay. My dog is over here. And that's why I'm moving my hand if it looks weird. Um, so no perineal care for the client with a cesium implant. Uh, you can bring them the wash basin. They can do it themselves as long as they're, they're staying flat or no more than 45 degrees and not getting out of bed. So in D, instructing the client, she must remain on bed rest is acceptable. She does have to remain on bed rest assisting the client to turn to her right side to listen to her lungs. She can turn from side to side, but she can't get up. She can't walk to the bathroom. You can't put her head up more than 45 degrees. So the issue here where you have to intervene immediately is standing next to the, she's standing, the, the student nurse, he or she standing next to the bed, providing perineal care. You have to intervene immediately. If a cesium implant falls out of a client's body, which of the fine action should the nurse take first? 
Call the radio radiology department immediately. Pick up the implant with gloved hands and dispose of it in the trash. Leave the room and notify the physician. Use forceps to place the implant in a lead-lined container. So remember the right answer is the right answer because of the other answers. So we would call the radiology department, but, but we have something we can do before that. And it's a first question. So there is something here we can do, do first. Pick up the implant with gloved hands. Absolutely not. High doses of radiation. Do not be touching that with gloved hands. Leave the room and notify the physician. Eventually you'll have to do that, but that's not first. You can, you should use forceps to place the implant in a lead line container. So you would expect there to be lead line containers in the room that would be part of caring for this patient. There should be forceps and a lead line container in the room already, knowing that if one of these cesium implants falls out, you're going to use those forceps to place it in a lead lined container. That's the first thing you would do. Remember it says first. A client with cervical cancer is receiving brachytherapy with a cesium implant. Which of the following is the most appropriate nursing intervention? Maintain the client on bed rest in a private room. That's appropriate. That's an appropriate nursing intervention. You don't want them in the room with somebody else and they do have to be on bed rest. Encourage the client to ambulate frequently. Absolutely not. Allow the client to have visitors at any time. Absolutely not, y'all. No, that's a big issue. They can't um, have visitors. Remove the implant if the client is experiencing pain. No, we don't remove the implant. You can notify the physician, but um, we're not going to be removing any implants. We don't put them in. We don't take them out. So the most appropriate nursing intervention would be to maintain the client on bed rest in a private room. The nurse enters the room of a client with a cesium implant and notices the implant is no longer in place. What is the priority action for the nurse? So very similar to a question we had two questions ago, right? If it falls out, what do you do first? Okay, now we say we notice that it's no longer in place. What do we do first? Cover the implant with a towel and call for help. Pick up the implant with gloved hands and place it in a biohazard bag. Instruct the client to remain still and immediately notify the radiation safety officers document the incident in the client's medical record. So it's a first, what is the, oh, I'm sorry, not first. It's a priority action, priority action. So it's a best question. What is best? Not what is first. Now we don't have the option to pick it up with forceps and put it in a lead lined bag. Okay. That's not an option. So remember I said the right answer is the right answer because of the other answers. So would it be appropriate to cover it with a towel? and call for help. No, that that's not, not doing anything. Covering with a towel is useless. So we're not going to do that. Pick it up with gloved hands. I already told you we don't do that. And a biohazard bag doesn't do anything. Instruct the client to remain still and immediately notify the radiation safety officer. That sounds like a good idea. We, have the, we, we notice it's no longer in place. It doesn't say where it is. It's just no longer in place. So maybe it's on the bed. Uh, I don't know where it is, but it's not where it's supposed to be. So say, don't move. I'm going to call the radiation safety officer. That's an appropriate intervention. Document the incident in the client's medical record. Well, I would need to document it, but that's certainly not a priority at this time. So I'm going to instruct the client to remain still and notify the radiation safety officer. So what I'm saying is I wanted to give you two questions that looked a lot alike so that you would see how you can have slightly different answers depending on what the other answers are. So this is a testing strategy. Remember the right answer is the right answer because of the other answers. So you've got to think while you're taking this test. This is a critical thinking exam, clinical reasoning exam. Cr clinical reasoning and critical thinking mean the same thing. This is a clinical reasoning exam. You should be tired at the end of the NCLEX because you've been thinking. Okay, so that's all I'll say about that, but you got to be using your noggin here. Okay. Okay, next question. Looks like I have a typo. Which is the best nursing action when caring for a client with a cesium implant? Which is the best nursing action when caring for a client with a cesium implant? Encourage family to visit to help client maintain good spirits. Sit at the bedside when talking with the client to maintain eye contact. Spend extra time with the client to decrease her sense of loneliness. Stand in the doorway to communicate with the client when physical care is not required. Y'all, this is either you know it or you or you don't. You do not spend extra time. I don't care. I don't care if they're crying. I mean, I care if they're crying. Listen, I do care if they're crying. But it doesn't matter. We don't spend extra time. We don't sit in there and talk to them. And we don't encourage family to come in and stay with them 
Um, if the family wants to wear a lead lined apron and wants to come in for a few minutes, we can allow that to happen. But we don't encourage family to visit when they have a cesium implant. And we stand in the doorway to talk with them um, when physical care is not required. What instructions should the RN give to the UAP caring for a client with a cesium implant? Okay, so I'm giving instructions to the UAP about this client who has a cesium implant. You must wear a lead apron when caring for the client. You must not spend more than half hour total in the room with the client today. As long as you are wearing a lead apron, there is no limit on how much time you can spend in the room with the client. You must wear a dosimeter badge when caring for the client. If you suspect you're pregnant, you should not spend more than half an hour in the room with the client today. Notify me immediately if her temperature is elevated. Okay. So again, this, this is just, do you know it or don't you know it? So let's turn it into a series of true false questions because that's what I always do for SATA questions. So cesium implant. Person with this, uh, when caring for a patient with cesium implant, plant, I must wear a lead apron when caring for the client. That's true. So we're going to pick that one because we're giving the UAP instruction. So A is true. When caring for a client with a cesium implant, I must not spend more than half hour total in the room with the client. That's actually true. And I know it seems like no time at all. And it's not. That's why we stand in the doorway to communicate with them. You cannot be in the room more than half an hour, even with the lead apron on, half hour is max. So that's a true statement. C, as long as I'm wearing a lead apron, there's no limit on how much time I can spend in the room with a client That's with a cesium implant. That's false. A half hour is maximum. I must wear a dosimeter badge when caring for the client. That's true. Dosimeter badge is what keeps track of how much radiation I'm being exposed to. If I suspect I'm pregnant, I should not spend more than half hour in the room with a client. I cannot, nobody who's pregnant or thinks they could be pregnant can take care of a, a patient with a, a cesium implant. No radiation for pregnant women. Okay. Zero, not half hour, nothing. They're not going to be caring for the client. Uh, notify me if her temperature is elevated. That's true. So what we're watching for is increased vaginal discharge, like significant vaginal discharge, nausea, vomiting, or increased temperature. Those things can indicate either an infection or some kind of a rupture of some sort that we don't want to happen because radiation, y'all, we can't be exposed to it, but she's got that implanted in her cervix. Y'all that can do a lot of damage. This is no easy intervention. Okay. This is no easy intervention. She's got radiation right at the site of where the cancer is. So is it killing cancer cells? Hopefully, but it's killing lots of other cells too. So she could start to she could really uh, rupture her cervix. She could have serious infection. She could have a lot of issues. So those are the true statements. Cesium implants are considered which type of therapy? Chemotherapy, brachytherapy, external radiation therapy, or commuted tomography therapy? Okay, D, I just made up. It is brachytherapy. Brachytherapy, the word, it's a vocabulary word. The word means implanted radiation or internal radiation. So it could be that they uh, put in a, a liquid into the bladder. So sometimes they'll do internal bladder radiation. It's a radiation liquid and they'll, they'll have to have that implanted for, not implanted, but sit there for a while. Um, they can do the rice granules that have radiation in them. They're not rice granules. You know what I mean by that? So there's different types of brachytherapy. Most commonly used, in my experience, for prostate uh, prostate cancer and cervical cancer, and also not unusual to have it um, used to treat bladder cancer. When caring for a client admitted for a cesium implant, which is the following order should the nurse question? Fully catheter, complete bed rest, vital signs every four hours, or a high fiber diet? So fully catheter is required. They are going to have a fully catheter because you don't want them getting up and we're not rolling them and sitting them up to sit on a bedpan because that's the these cesium implants could fall out. So fully catheter is required. Complete bed rest is required. That includes no getting up and going to the bathroom. Vital signs every four hours. We have to watch for signs and symptoms of infection. So part of the half hour, if the UAP is caring for this patient, they can spend up to a half hour in the room and they can get vital signs every four. That's fine. High fiber diet, that's the order you should question. It's actually going to be a low residue diet, which is a low fiber diet. We actually want to decrease the amount of bowel movements because we don't want them to have to get up and have a bowel movement and lose one of their cesium implants. So uh, a low residue, which is also low fiber, low fiber, low residue diet 
is the diet of choice for someone with a cesium implant. Okay, well, that's it. I got through those a lot faster than I thought I would. So I hope that was helpful to you and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks for being a part of our clinic review family. See you later.